Hey there folks, it's Brittany Jackson and today we're going to talk about using the Microsoft Outlook app on your iPad. So if you haven't downloaded the app already, you can do so by going and finding self-service on your iPad. For me, I've put it in a Hiram folder and it's that first one there that has the square that's slightly skewed, it's pretty colors with some four dots in the middle. So if I click on that, here you can find all of the Hiram sponsored apps that you can download. So I have already downloaded Microsoft Outlook onto my iPad, so it's not going to show up in here. However, if you haven't already, it would show up in here. So these are the ones that I have yet to install currently. So I'm going to go ahead and leave self-service. That's where you would download the app for Microsoft Outlook. So for me, I've downloaded it and I put it on the second page here. So you can see it's that second one over and it says Outlook. I'm going to go ahead and tap on it it's going to ask you to log in. So it's reading that I have um, jacksonb1 at hiram.edu. I'm going to go ahead and hit add account. And I'm not going to add another account right now, but you could add in if you have a Gmail or anything like that, you can add that in, but I'm going to say maybe later. I can turn on notifications. I'm not going to personally because I don't typically use Outlook on my iPad specifically. I tend to use the mail app more frequently. So I'm going to say no thanks, but feel free to turn yours on. In fact, I would encourage it if this is the app you're going to use for your Hiram email, make sure that you use it. So here, once you're in here, you can see your inbox. You can choose other and see other messages that maybe aren't as frequented or as important that show up. You can add another mailbox by clicking that add button over here in the left hand side of your screen. If you use the little hamburger icon, you can see any folders you create in your Outlook inbox. So you can see all of mine here. Down at the bottom there, there's a little gear. And this is where you could add mail accounts, your storage accounts, and change any of your settings for Microsoft Outlook. And then across the bottom, you've got your mail. So this is the first thing that it takes you into. Search will allow you to search for spe specific emails or from specific people. This is a great resource to utilize when you're trying to find something that you remember you received but can't find it. And then across the bottom here, we also have the calendar. And here you can see this takes me into my Outlook calendar. So I can look at my calendar and see what I've put on my calendar. I would encourage you to utilize, utilize this. It's really helpful to keep things organized for yourself, at least for the calendar purposes. If you come up here, you can see that there's that Office 365 and it looks like it's dinging a little bell. I'm going to open that and it's telling me I could set do not disturb. I'm not going to go ahead and set that up right now, but it is telling me that that was a notification. So that was something I could do. So once I'm in here, if I need to send somebody an email, there's that plus sign in the middle of your screen at the bottom, just above the search icon. So if I click on that, it's going to, you know, tell me the first time I go through it, do I want text predictions on? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Here I can enter in a new email. I'm going to send one to myself and testing. And in the body, I'm going to put testing again. And then across the bottom here, you could see that you could send your availability or convert this to an event from on, that would be on your calendar. You could attach a file or a photo. You could take a picture and it's going to ask you to allow your camera. And I'm going to say allow access to all photos. And I'm going to say that one and go ahead and hit this card image because I'm not going to use that right now and changing the text or the body information, the formatting for you. And then once you've done all that, you could also do a spoken message that'll take up a little bit more space and know that you're limited to 10 gigabytes per email. So know that there is a limit on how, how big the file is that you, you can email or how many files you can email that equal up to 10 gigs. And that little arrow at the bottom means to send. I'm going to go ahead and hit send. And we should see it pop up here in a moment into my inbox. And there it comes up. Note to self, testing. If I want to see more here about information, I click on those three little dots beside it. I could mark it as read. I could flag it. I could do a reply or a reply all. Remember, when you are hitting reply or reply all, reply will just re respond to the person that sent the email. Reply all responds to everybody. Always be careful about that. We're really good at accidentally hitting reply all when really you only wanted to respond to one person. So just always be careful. And of course, there's the forward and delete. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one since I didn't really need it. So let me go ahead here, hit delete. You could also pull from the right and um, archive your emails that way. And you see here where it says like the two and the three, that means there's three emails in that bunch. So it's based on 
Um, it's filtered by grouping the emails that are of the same chain together. I can filter how I see my email. So if I was looking for ones with attachments, here are the ones that have attachments. So that's really all there is to utilizing Outlook. It's pretty straightforward. So if you have questions or run into issues, always feel free to stop by the help desk down in Dre Computer Center, which is located around the backside of Teach Out Price and down the steps, or stopping by the Tech and Trek desk, which is located in the library straight back just before the Clock Tower Cafe on the main floor. As always, good luck.